came in. I originally wanted to showcase the entire merging array. Unfortunately, that would have been a long video if I were to explain all the components. So for this video, I'm going to uh, explain some of the components that I'll be using. And then in the actual array video, I will explain how it works as a whole. Now, this is the actual merging unit. It has these two outputs down here. This top one lets us know whether any of the units within the array is inactive, so we can start setting boxes to it. And the bottom one over here lets us know if any of the units within the array is active, which basically lets us know that um, the entire array is active and we shouldn't do something. Now, to showcase this, I'm going to get this tick freeze uh, ready. And first one, example i guess is i'm gonna put in two of these boxes and the next one i am going to showcase a box that will give us a full and an empty so if i were to click on the draw here and do that we put the most full here here and what we can see is that we distribute the box there we filled it we detected that and when we break it, we can actually see we redistribute the box there, or redispense the box that we just emptied into it. So we're going to do it again, and you can see that. So two, fine, and then full box, empty. Now the reason why we have to put the box back in is because if we get a full, but then we end up with a partial. I'm going to see if I can tick freeze this real quick. So right now it's filling the box and when this one gets full there's going to be some items left in the hopper so there are items left in the hopper and that's why we want to re-dispense the box that was being emptied so we don't have those items stuck in there let's see all the comparators are when we get our full box and in our partial box the next component is the box comparer what it does is that it compares the fill level between two boxes and depending on which one is most full and least full, it will put them in their respective lines. Now this top part here that does the actual uh, comparing logic was designed by Feridian from Hammer SMP. Uh, I basically stole it from him. Hopefully he, he's fine with that. And to showcase how this works, again, this is the most full, least full. And just put it in these droppers and the droppers will introduce some randomness to it. And there we go. We got it. So how it works is that this slice here activates first, then this one second. And what that means is that these boxes will go down into the chest here in a precise order. Now that order changes when the second one over here is more full than the first one. From this comparator line over here, the comparator will light up, activate this uh, repeater, and it will hold this hopper long enough to change the order of what item goes into these slots first. So basically what would happen is all the time, the most full item would be the first one. And by knowing that, I can then do the distribution. So that's how this one works. This over here is the partial, full, and empty separator. After we get outputs from that merger over there. They're all kind of mixed in a single ice stream, so we're gonna need to separate them. And show that. Put it in here. You can start seeing it doing its thing. There we go. Um, it's quite small, but it has this big bulky part up here. And this is because the distribution uh, inputs are going to be very irregular. And a lot of internal clocks that read off the uh, dispenser um, kind of get short pulsed a lot. And in order to prevent that, we use this sort of handshakey uh, distribution line. So, as long as there's items and there's a minimum guarantee time between when this activates to when it resets, we can then really uh, make sure that. There, there isn't any unnecessary short pulses that will break anything. And you can see over here, got all our items back. Yep. So the last 
component and probably the most interesting but it's uh, the most niche is this ordered batch wise bulk silo that I made it's two white tileable and right now I have four of them it's quite interesting because it is again the ordered so it will preserve the order of the boxes coming through and it is batch wise so if I start taking items out from one then I can't feel it and it will dynamically assign uh, slices to different batches based on how many items come through. I hope that makes sense. So to showcase that, I have orders that look like this. You can consider this one batch. This is the second batch. If I were to begin distribution, what you want to do is first reset everything and then start distributing items through. This is Russian Machines Agentic Item Liner. Very cool stuff. It guarantees a uh, agentic gap between each item type. I mean, each item coming through. So here we have it that it's full, but just to showcase what happens when it's actually full full for the silo. And you can see all the orders are being preserved. And right now it will activate that which will lock and that would mean if I were to continue putting items in all these items will now go to the second silo just as so now once you finish distributing all the items you want to click this to confirm that all the silos that are currently having items in them will be assigned to this batch so once I do that these lights turn on and these batches have been confirmed to be, uh, I guess, batch A. And regardless of how many times I reset it, as long as there are items in the silo, it will um, we'll hold it. So this means I can take items out from it. And the items being taken out are in order. Now what is the most interesting part about this is that I can now begin putting in new items. And it will assign them over here to the third silo and even though this silo over here is going to be empty it will still continue pulling items into this because it is locked to batch A and we don't want to mix the batches together. so right now it's done we do have all the boxes uh, in and if I were to click this to confirm the second batch, reset it, you can see now this is the second batch. And the more you make of this and the more um, you use it, you will realize that it is quite important for the merging array. And hopefully in the merging array video, I can really showcase uh, this sort of thing in action. But yeah, that's a, I, oh wait, I guess there's one more thing I want to show. Um, as I showed before, there's always an item that's going to be stuck in here when you fill up a silo. In order to get that out, I use dust redirection. Uh, if, for example, this was locked, I did that. The dust gets redirected and it's no longer powering the software. Now, when you dust redirect, it doesn't actually produce a, a update to uh, the surrounding blocks. So in order for this hopper to register that it is unlocked, we use um, timings up here to power that and the dust over here will update the hopper to make sure that it's now unlocked and the same thing is true so if I were to do that even though this is connected to the hopper um, the hopper doesn't actually know that it's um, currently locked and you're going to have to update it properly again to uh, make sure that's locked but yeah that's about it